Resistance is an electrical property of matter that we studied extensively. Ohm's law, or V equals I times R, describes this property in terms of voltage and current as it relates to the resistive characteristic of, of, um, of materials. Well, capacitance is another natural property of material that exists due to the electric field associated with charged particles. To understand this, consider this circuit here. Imagine for a long time this voltage source has been disconnected or turned off, and at T equals zero, we apply this voltage to the circuit. Immediately, charged particles begin to flow. We call that current. Imagine the first charged particle coming and hitting this device here, which is known as a capacitor. A capacitor consists of two conducting layers, in this case two metallic plates, separated by, so conductors, separated by a non-conducting material, a dielectric. This dielectric could be nothing more complicated or significant than air or free space. It also could be something like mica or plastic, electrolytic materials. Suffice it to say that we've got two conducting materials separated by a non-conducting material. So this charged particle comes along and it hits this metallic plate, this conductor, and it can't go any further because there's this non-conducting or insulating material. The electric field of that charge extends itself across the dielectric and forces a charged particle to leave. It effectively bumps an equivalent charged particle off of the other conducting plate, leaving behind a net negative charge. So this positive charge that's deposited on one plate bumps a positive charge off the other plate, leaving a negative charge, and that separation of charge expresses itself in a voltage. Charged particles continue to flow. And as they continue to flow, they bump off other charged particles, leaving a net negative charge here. And slowly, or perhaps not slowly, but over time, as a function of time, this voltage increases. As with resistance, capacitance can be either your friend or your enemy. We'll see later in the class that for several reasons we'll actually add capacitors to the circuit. We'll also see that capacitance can be a hindrance and that it limits things like how quickly information can be transferred in a, um, in a uh, computing environment, for example. So capacitors. As I mentioned, frequently we will, in, we will uh, add capacitance to a circuit for a number of different reasons. Capacitors take on different shapes and sizes. Capacitors can be relatively small. Capacitors can be larger. This is a start capacitor for a motor. Its, its purpose is to have and store some additional energy so that at the instant we start to we try to start the motor up, it serves as a source of additional charge and energy. These are capacitors that you might find in a substation or hanging on a transmission pole. And we're going to learn in, in uh, 2260, in later classes, that we add capacitance to transmission systems to help electrical power move through the grid more effectively. As I mentioned, capacitance can also be a hindrance. Capacitance exists any time you have conducting layers separated by a non-conductor, as is the case in the parallel bus lines on a printed circuit board. The data lines are conducting materials that are separated by an insulator so they don't short out against each other there is capacitance that forms between those two lines. The capacitance in a coaxial cable, or capacitance exists there, you've got the conducting um, line that goes down the middle, separated or covered with an insulator, and then you've got the shielding, or the mesh wrapped around the outside of the shields from, electrical, um, from absorbing electrical radiation. But once again, you've got one, two metallic or conducting materials separated by a dielectric or a non-conducting material.
in twisted pair cabling such as that is used in local area network distribution systems. We have two wires laying side by side separated by an insulator. By winding those wires we can tend to counteract the capacitance that would exist along the um, along the wires if the wires weren't twisted. You can think of a capacitor as something like a bucket, a bucket for holding charge. Once again, here's kind of a diagrammatic representation of capacitance or of a capacitor. Again, it represents or it consists of two conducting materials separated by a dielectric. As charge is deposited on one plate, as a positive charge is deposited on one plate, negative charge is left behind and this voltage between the two plates is established. Voltage on a capacitor is analogous to the height of water in a bucket. If you've got a large bucket with a large base, that bucket can hold lots of water for a relatively small change in height. In other words, small changes in height can hold large amounts of water. If on the other hand you have a small bucket with a small diameter, smaller amounts of water coming into it will cause a change in height. In a capacitor, the height corresponds to the voltage and the water corresponds to the charge contained within the within the capacitor or within be, between these or stored on these parallel plates just as the amount of water that can be held in a bucket is dependent upon the volume of the bucket the amount of charge that can be contained or can be stored on a capacitor for a given volume is dependent upon the surface area of the plates and the distance between the plates consisting of the dielectric. The characteristic of the dielectric or the dielectric is characterized by epsilon, its permittivity. The charge that can be stored within a capacitor then is a function of its permittivity, the area of the capacitive plates, the voltage across them, and the distance separating the two. The amount of capacitance is defined as, C is defined as, the amount of charge that can be held by the capacitor per volt. The capacitance then is a measure of the amount of charge, or the, I guess the larger the capacitor is, the more charge it's capable of holding for a given voltage across it. In this sense then, a capacitor really is a charge storing device. And we'll see later on in this class that within that voltage and that charge, we can also store energy.